Um, I just had to. I just had to sit and talk to him about his plan. Um, and it was, you know, for me, complete in the sense of, look, I, I told him, I said, I asked him about his offensive philosophy and his defensive philosophy. I asked Jim sometime about that. I asked Hutch about that sometime. Mel talks to me about, man, I, listen, I can't coach. We talked about that. But I don't understand all the you know, pick and rolls and the, the movement and the basket and all the stuff that the guys back there learn every day on this court. But what I do know is people. And what I wanted to hear is what I heard. I care about them as people first. I want them to be great students and great athletes. He's competitive. He wants to win because they want to win. He had a plan and he thought about what he would like his staff to look like. He's still working through that uh, to solidify. Um, he talked about his family, which is also important. Look, you know, we hire an individual, but people bring a family, right? And so they have to be committed and in and, and want to be a part of this and supportive and those kind of things. And so we, we talked about a lot of different stuff, most of which didn't include the X's and O's on this court. Uh, I knew he knew him. I knew he had that particular piece in him. But I wanted to just hear from him, and as he said, get to know each other as, a, as, a, as men, as people. Him talking about how he vision, envisions his head coach responsibilities um, and his play. And, uh, and for me, you know, at the end of the day, um, and, and, I, and I half joke about the gamble and the risk and all the stuff you, you all wrote. Um, it wasn't. It wasn't something I thought of that day. It wasn't a, a, you know, in my mind, it wasn't a risk I'm taking. It was that I was bringing a great person and somebody who I thought will be a great head coach on day one here. He doesn't have the experience, but let me let you check. Uh, I'm gonna give credit to Brenda. In the last two years, folks, 110 bas schools have changed basketball coaches. A lot of those people who changed had great deals of experience. Let him evolve, let him develop into a head coach of his own. That's what I'm going to do, support him answer questions, put people around him, and let him evolve. All these things about, well, he hasn't coached a game, and what's Ward doing, and oh my God, he's taking a risk and a gamble, and all these different things. I'm a gamble with people who love this place the way he does. It gets emotional when he looks at his family and he talks to those kids. I'm gonna take that risk, I'm gonna take that challenge, put it on me. Let him evolve. I got. I talked about his great colleagues because those are the people who one day. I remember. I remember talking to Hutch. This years ago, Hutch started right from being an assistant. I think for a year. Was it a year or two years? Two. Started part time. She worked as an administrative assistant. She's the greatest coach in the history of softball. Mm. Jim started part-time with his daddy in the off-season. In other words, folks, we all have a place to start. He started six years ago in the two of the best minds in basketball in Pat Riley and Eric Spoelstra. He's played for some of the greatest coaches in NBA history. He played for Steve Fisher Heath, who's a national championship coach. I know it's long-winded, but I've been, I was waiting for that question. <laughs> I was waiting for it because for me, um, you know, I, I'll take it. But let him evolve, because he will, in my opinion, evolve into a great coach, a great head coach, because he's already a great man, as y'all saw.